Hey guys, today I'm going to show you the most common usages for Xdebug within PHP Storm. Most of us are probably used to typing out var dump and pounding it out in many different places within the execution of your code. And it can become very tedious and very annoying to do. And sometimes you might even leave it in there and forget that it's there and accidentally push it up to a production server or something like that. I'm sure we've all done it. I know I have. Anyway, Xdebug is so much more convenient because you can simply do one click, add a breakpoint, and then you will be able to start stepping through the code line by line. So if you haven't installed it or learned how to initiate a debug session, go back and watch the first two videos in this playlist. Otherwise, you're ready to follow along. So let's go ahead and tell PHP Storm to start listening for debug, uh, deep incoming debug connections. And I already have my debug configuration selected. And let's set our first breakpoint. Let's set it here on the very first line of code and debug. Now when we click the debug button, the three main panes are going to go ahead and open up. Frames is going to show you exactly where you are, so it's telling me I'm on index.php on line 5. And the watches pane, I'll cover that in another video, but basically you can set certain variables there to just simply watch them. And then you wouldn't have to come here to the variables pane and, you know, let's say that you had a very deep array or a very deep object and keep on clicking all these different things that expand it. You'll actually be able to just set it right here and watch it. It's really a convenience pane. Uh, anyways, you'll notice that the code is paused on line five, but in the variables pane, we don't see this math variable that we have right here. And that's because when xdebug uh, pauses, it's stopping at the beginning of this line of code, not at the end of the line. So once we go down to the next line, you'll see the math variable pop up here in the variables pane. So the first button I'm gonna show you, this is the step over button. And basically what that does is it allows you to go one line at a time through your code very convenient especially if you're trying to figure out where a specific event happens during the execution of your code you may not know exactly but you might have a rough idea so you can actually go line by line and watch what happens and as i do it just keep an eye on the variables pane and you'll see all of these different variables start to pop up there and keep in mind this is a very basic usage this is super useful on much bigger more complex applications Okay, so we've gone through all of the different lines of code here, and they've all populated, so you'll see the uh, the results of the add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Okay, that's the most basic usage, is just simply seeing what a variable contains. Now, this one here, math, that's an object. That's a, a class I created, a very simple class. And you'll notice here, next to the uh, equal sign, it'll show you that it's an object of the type math, and this little two within the brackets is showing you how many properties the object, hold, the object holds. Um, so I have two properties in there. I have a protected property and a private property, and the reason I selected those is because I wanted to show you that it works with all types of properties. They don't have to just be public, they can be private or protected as well. So when we click that and open it up, our number property is equal to negative 28, our actions property is an array. So now array is showing you there's four elements within the array. And then as you can see, I've got subarrays. So this is just basically a log. I'm just keeping an array full of uh, all the different numbers that I've added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided. Uh, another nice thing is let's say that you've got an associative array. So let's say that these are not numbers. You can actually come over here, right click. Uh, as a matter of fact, here we go. This, this one's an associative array. And we can right click and click copy name. And now it's on your clipboard. So let's say you wanted to paste that name somewhere, somewhere within your code. Oop, click the wrong button would help if I knew what I was doing. Mm. 
why is that doing that? All right, so we'll just, I'm clicking the wrong button. Let's just right click and paste. And you'll notice that add, which was on my clipboard, just went ahead and pasted. And you can do the same thing with the values. So let's say that this is some long thing and you don't want to remember it. Just right click on it, copy value. And that's all there is to it. So we'll go ahead and stop this and we're going to run again. And the next thing I'm going to show you is how to step into a function. And what I mean by that is let's go to the math class and you'll see here, I'm just going to close this out. You'll see here that we've got four functions, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And I don't have breakpoints set in any of them. Now, yes, it, if my application was this, this simple, I could just come and put breakpoints all over the place wherever I want and not have to care about it. But let's pretend that we're working on a big application and we will run and let's say that we want to know what's taking place within the subtract method. Well, we can click this step into button and what that will do is, if you remember, the code is paused at the beginning of the line, so subtract is not yet run. So if you click step into, it'll bring us to the very first line of the subtract method. And so subtract, the argument is holding the number 20 right now. You can see that both here and you can also see that up here, okay? And you can go down it line by line if you want, but let's say that it's a much larger function. Let's say there's 50 or 100 lines of code within the function. And you don't want to go down all of them. You've already seen whatever it is that you need to see. And you want to get back out to the uh, to your main page that you were already working on. So all you've got to do is click this step out button. And we don't have to go through all those lines of code. So that's brought us down to the very next line. And we don't have to go even line by line. Let's say that you've seen everything you need to see. And you're ready to just let the code continue running. And that's that. So all you've got to do is hit this uh, resume button and that will run the rest of the code. So let's go ahead and debug again. And I should have pointed out to you, here's a debug button. It's the same, it performs the same functions as the button right up here. So we'll go ahead and click it. And there we are, we're paused. Um, and aside from going over to stuff line by line, Let's say that you had multiple breakpoints. Let's say we had a breakpoint here. We can just simply click the resume button and it will execute all of the code and then just simply stop at the next breakpoint. Okay. Now let's uh, let it run out. And let's say that um, for some reason now you just want to run the code and you don't want it to stop anywhere at all. Well, you don't have to unset all of your breakpoints to make that happen. You can click this button right here, which says mute, mute breakpoints. And now when you debug, our breakpoints will be skipped. Now, the next option, let's leave them muted, is if you click the, the settings button, this option here says unmute breakpoints on ses session finish. So if they're muted, but on the next session, you don't want them to be muted, go ahead and select that option. So now let's run, they'll be muted. And now they shouldn't be muted. Oh, there we go. I thought it didn't work, but apparently it did. So there we are, we're stopped on line five. So click the stop button. Uh, the next thing we can do is what's called a conditional breakpoint. So let's say that you've got an enormous for each loop and let's say there's a hundred elements in it and you don't want to run through each iteration of the loop. That'll take you forever, and that defeats the whole purpose of using Xdebug. Xdebug is all about making your life easier and not harder. So we'll set a breakpoint, say, here in the, in the uh, add function, and let's say that we only want to pause execution of the code when the add argument is equal to the number 50, for example. So we right-click on the breakpoint, and enter, this is just like a big if statement, that's all it is. So add equals 50. Exactly the same type of thing you'd put into an if statement. Click done. And so we already know that add is not equal to 50, so when we run the run the, the debug session, 
it's not going to pause the execution of the code. But if we come over here and pass in the number 50, well, now it is going to pause. And there we go. So again, you, you can see how this would help you in a large loop or something like that. Or maybe you've got some problem with the website and it's only occurring when a certain argument is passed into a function. Super handy. So we can go ahead and finish out execution of that code. And let's uh, oh show values in line. So when we run the code, this is showing the values in line. It's showing it right up here in the editor. It's merely a convenience thing. It's just basically showing you every single thing that's down here. And so we can also turn that off if we don't want that. So next time we run it, did it turn off? Oh, it's still selected. Now it shouldn't show. There we go. So now it's not, not showing up there. So in the next video, we will go over some of the more in-depth functions of XDebug within PHP Storm. Thanks for watching.